Hello everyone! This video was supposed to come out a little early, but things didn't go according to plan. I prepared it for you before New Year's Eve because I didn't expect such an early release of the second part of episode 69 by Boom. But apparently our beloved creator decided to give everyone a gift for the new year. And it's really awesome. But anyway, you voted for this video to be published too. And episode 69 is still not over. Anyway, I think you'll be interested to see all the secrets and hidden details I found for you here. So watch the video till the end. Also, speaking of the holidays, I want to wish you a Happy New Year 2024. I am very excited that we were able to build such a great community this year, and I assure you that the next year will be even cooler and more interesting. Now, by tradition, get your tea and snacks ready and sit tight to watch the new video. Let's go! And the first thing I'd like to address is those two creepy-looking Skibidi toilet heads that were peeking behind the black speaker man's back. As I later figured it out, it was a direct reference to one of the older videos on Defuk Boom's channel that was titled as Skibidi Sleepwalk Toilet. In that video, we saw the average Skibidi toilet singing Skibidi Dop Dop Yes Yes song, which already became a signature for the whole series. But then he gets interrupted by another song that has never been used by Defuk again. It's Ultravox by Sleepwalk. This sleepwalk song is being sung by two toilets, one of whom seems to be more aggressive than another, and attacks POV in the end of the video. Those two toilets were intended to be so-called sleepwalk brothers, and play a certain part in the Skibidi series lore. But then they were cut out by Dafuk, so they never appeared in the series again, aside from this tiny cameo in the beginning of episode 69. It's interesting how they reappeared in the role of failed test subjects in the main Skibidi lab, and I have my own theory on their emergence. It seemed to me that the corridor the members of the Alliance squad were walking through was filled with different kinds of failed Skibidi experiments bearers, and Sleepwalk Brothers were one of them. I think at some point they were meant to represent Defuk's unsuccessful experiments before the Skibidi Toilet series that we know and love was established. So it's no wonder to me now why Skibidi Brothers weren't used anywhere besides this one episode. Although it's a bit of a pity to me, that Ultravox song has never been used by Dafuk afterwards. I find it really enjoyable for my ears. To prove my idea about the failed experiment subjects on the Skibidi base, I would also like to draw your attention to the concept of zombie mutants in general. We saw this spooky guy that attacked POV Plungerman, but was he really that dangerous? As I re-watched this episode, I caught myself comparing his level of intelligence and physical abilities to the mutants we saw in the earlier episodes of the series. He really seemed to be kind of dumb to me. Look at the way he behaves in the fight. This guy is really crazy, but at the same time he doesn't even know what he's doing. Compare him with the Skibidi mutant we saw in episode 66. Aside from being intimidating as well, this guy seemed to be really smart. His reactions were sharp, and he behaved quick and deft. For example, as TV Men's Glow stopped him from approaching POV, he then put on the protective glasses really quick. I doubt whether this zombie mutant from the bunker could do the same thing. And honestly, I think that even the first mutant we saw in episode 33 could be smarter than this guy. The only actual advantage he has is being incredibly hardy and robust. He even managed to survive the Black Speakerman's knives blow. But think about this. Isn't every single Skibidi mutant we saw before really enduring as well? Remember this one guy from episode 63, for instance. He absorbed just a tone of damage from the elite squad members and still managed to stay alive. Also, I noticed one interesting detail about Zombie Mutant. He has a weirdly shaped spot on his nape. Could he undergo some sort of surgery that somehow affected his brain? Or maybe it's a sign that he was not originally created as a whole but rather collected from the pieces of different cameramen. All that seems to be really interesting to me. The next hidden detail I noticed was about the parasite's appearance. Look at those little suitcases on their backs. Could it be the sign of Skibidi Parasite's technical improvement? Or maybe it means they're not the creatures that have their own mind, but they are the robots that have been controlled from the distance by someone else. In that case, I'm really curious about the process of their control and about their puppet masters. Another reference that I managed to catch later was this guy from the chamber taken by fire. In my previous analysis of this whole episode, I said that this dude was a reference to Ghost Rider, and I wasn't wrong. But he also appears to be the prototype of the Skibidi toilet from episode 49. 
which was burnt to the bone by TV Woman. Later in this episode, we can see how this guy manages to survive the fire damage this time. Look how he peeks from the door for a short moment of time when the doors get open due to the emergency alarm. So it makes me think that he was a test subject for the experiment, the point of which was to develop the fire resistance from Skibidi toilets. Although I wouldn't call the results so successful. I mean, the fire doesn't go anywhere, so probably something went wrong here. But it proves that Skibidi take a lot of things into consideration and try to develop and upgrade themselves as much as possible. TV Woman seemed a real threat to them alongside with Titan TV Man, who also has a yellow TV screen with the ability to set enemies on fire. We could see that effect in the first part of episode 68, but I can also assume that this experiment's goal was not only to create an anti-fire resistance for Skibidi Army, but also to produce a weapon or a part of Skibidi's gear that would work similarly to those TV screens. We will see whether Skibidi will succeed in that field or not in the future episodes. The next thing I'm glad to announce is the revealed mystery of those three skeletons in the chamber near the large bunker door. In the previous analysis of episode 69, I noticed how weird their whole presence was combined with their appearance and position in the frame, but I couldn't figure them out at that moment. But now I have two insights on who they might be a reference to. Firstly, before the emergence in the original Dafuk series, they appeared in the 75th episode of Verlance's Skibidi Wars alternative series. In the lore of this multiverse, they were minions of the mighty Toilet Necromancer, which explains this weird thing about them being dead and alive at the same time. I think Dafuk could have used them as a reference to the other creators' series. And I already told you before multiple times how I started noticing more and more overlapping of the original series and multiverses. Maybe Dafuk is planning a full plot-wise collaboration meant to be revealed in the finale of the original series. So far as it goes, my assumptions were getting confirmed. And secondly, those three guys may also be a reference to the famous Berserk Skeleton meme that was really successful on TikTok and Roblox. And if you watched my Top 15 References video, you would know how much Dafuk loves making references to all kinds of goofy memes that went viral on the internet. The next hidden detail I didn't notice at first was being placed in this particular frame. As the Alliance members walk into the large room with the ladder in the center of it, we can see the hidden CCTV camera at the top of the screen on the right. This detail makes everything that's been going on before our eyes even creepier. Could that mean that the whole Skibidi base is being observed non-stop? And there are no secrets for whoever runs it in the Alliance Squad's movements? Are our buddies being led into the trap without noticing it? I find it to be very plausible, which only raises the degree of tension for the next part of the episode, which has already been incredibly high. Also, this particular CCTV could have been used as a tool of observation for this dorky but dangerous Skibidi zombie mutant that attacked Plunger Man a few seconds later. I think he was placed behind this large door. And when the camera caught the movement of the unknown intruders, a certain signal could have been sent for this mutant to get released. In any case, this detail made the whole scene three times more eerie to me. The next thing I'd like to address is the way how quickly the white terracotta brother reacted when the bunker emergence alarm set off and the door with multiple mutants behind them got open. He reacted almost instantly, as if he was programmed to do that. Or maybe he knew everything that was about to happen in the next round of seconds and was already fully prepared for it. I have a few theories on that. The first one is that White Terracotta Bro is not just an ordinary character of Skibidi Toilet Universe, but more of a tool for the further plot progression. That's why I think he's not meant to die in this series. His whole role is to guide other characters to the next step and to execute orders from Dafuk himself, both the creator and the in-game character. I have another theory though, and it's so bold it may even sound a bit crazy, but brace with me. It goes like this. What if the white terracotta bro was not just a Dafuk's assistant or apprentice all this time, but his actual alter ego transformed into the material form that could exist in the limits of Skibidi Universe? Because Dafuk seems to break the laws of this universe's canon on the regular basis, while white terracotta looks much more down to earth. That would explain the fact that White Terracotta Bro didn't seem to be anything special in the earlier episodes of the series. So did Dafuk as well. Because if you remember, the secret agent didn't do anything that important in the beginning as well. He had been just appearing for a couple seconds from time to time, observing what was happening before him. 
It was only later revealed that the secret agent was of real importance, and I think the white terracotta bro can have a similar fate as a character. I hope you enjoyed this video because this is my last analysis for this year. I want to say again that I am grateful to every subscriber and every viewer. I am happy to do my best and to see that you like my videos. Happy New Year, my friends. Love you guys so much. And as always, that was me, ISO Toilet. See ya!